Um, so yeah, this is a kind of beginner focused talk about better key mapping. So I'm a web developer, also written a few web development books. That one's probably the one that you, you may have come across if you've been on Amazon and looked up these things. The day job, I work at Bet365, so I'm technical lead there. And on the side of that, I sort of blog and YouTube um, about web keyboards and obviously text editors. So the sort of stuff I do day to day is the front end of the stack. It's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I spend my days prototyping new features. And I enjoy pursuing the ultimate form in my tools, whether that's hardware or software, which software-wise, it's things like NeoVim. Hardware-wise, you can see why that picture it's led to me um, accumulating a few too many keyboards. So my editor journey, um, I'm a bit of an old dog now. So I can remember starting web development with Adobe PageMill, which I think I actually started with version 2. Um, the earliest grab I could find was a, a version 3, but there we go. So the first sort of editors I went through there, it wasn't until I got to sort of Coda before I really learned to sort of look under the visual side of things and see the code underneath and starting to get code. I'm not somebody with a, a computer science background. Um, but more sort of importantly, for the last sort of eight years, I've sort of swung between NeoVim and Sublime Text. But I've had occasional spells with literally every editor I could ever get my hands on. So given that, why have I ended up on NeoVim? Well, I'm quite sort of focused on trying to reduce my reliance on the mouse. Also with NeoVim, as you'll all no doubt be aware, there's an incredible depth to NeoVim. No matter how much time you spend with it, configuring it, using it, learning stuff, you always feel like you're just scratching the surface of what's possible. And the other thing I like about um, NeoVim is that you can make your own PDE. Um, so most editors are like pre-built boxes of Lego, and there's a kind of a very opinionated idea of what you've got to do with it. Whereas NeoVim is like a box of loose Lego, and I like that because you can effectively make whatever you need to make. And finally, with NeoVim, I'm by no means a polyglot working on lots of different languages, but to me, Lua feels relatively accessible. And so that means the possibilities of what I'm able to achieve in my editor are greater. <clears throat> so the reason I want to talk to you about mappings, particularly if you're a beginner, is because I think mappings can really empower you as a, as a user at the beginning. And they let you create functionality to your exact requirements. So that means that you can do um, you can make customizations that end up making you feel more powerful than you perhaps would have done in any of the other, other editors that you've tried. So what I thought I'd concentrate here on is a beginner-friendly way of organizing, grouping, and becoming more productive with your mappings. So I've got what I think is a fairly solid three-step approach to this. The first one being critical thinking. The second one being creating sensible mnemonics and groupings for your mappings. And then finally, learning to express any additional needs that you have with Lua. So critical thinking, what do we mean by that? Well, for me, it's, it's thinking about the things that you do all the time. So if I think about what I do all the time, it's this sort of stuff. It's grabbing for a string, it's finding a file, switching buffers, spelling, selecting text, switching windows, opening, toggling lazy git, and Zen mode. So if you're approaching it from that mindset, it stands to reason that the most used mappings that you use should be the most terse. And you want them, where possible, to be a single key press. And if you can't get a single key press, then perhaps a leader key and another key press is the second best. And just as a little aside, one of the things, again, if, if you're new to NeoVim, is you can think about the, the modal nature of NeoVim, and this lends you some things which you, you wouldn't be used to from a normal editor. So to give you some illustrations of the sort of thing that I mean, I happen to use a, a Colmac keyboard layout. And on Colmac, where a normal keyboard would have caps lock, um, you have delete on Colmac. So what I ended up doing is in normal mode, the delete key is just saving my file. So instead of I'm saving my files hundreds of times a day because I've usually got like a, 
a live reload thing going on if I'm working in JS or, or CSS. Instead of doing colon W and CR, uh, you know, uh, carries return, I can just press one key and the file's saved. The other thing that I do is I use, um, there's a plugin I like a lot called Pounce, which if we just hop over to, to any of them here, um, again on Colmac, just under my right index finger is my H key. So I have that um, mapped to Pounce. So you got a wall of text here, um, but let's suppose I want to jump somewhere. I can press H to set Pounce off. And then let's suppose about sort of just over halfway up the page there, there's a wired. So I can type, start typing wired and then see the possible jump points. And there, capital T, takes me um, exactly where I want to go. Um, so again, that's just something I use all the time. It's under one key, and it lets me move around um, buffers really quickly. <clears throat> and just to reiterate this point, because I think it's important, if you can figure out a mapping that makes sense and you get it to a, a single key, um, it really feels like you're you're winning. So the second sort of stage of this is about mnemonics and groupings. Now, ordinarily, if I'm talking to people about NeoVim, I would recommend that you use as few plugins as you need. Basically, only install a plugin if you really feel it necessary. But with that said, for mapping, I am going to recommend that you would use a plugin called WitchKey, and WitchKey. On the face of it, I, I looked at this a few times over the, the months that it's been out and sort of dismissed it because on the face of it, it was just a plugin that was showing me the mappings that I'd already made myself, and I didn't really see much value in that. So let me just switch across to Vim here and show you um, is a bunch of um, files in different buffers here. Um, and let's suppose I press my leader key. If you look at the sort of bottom third of the screen here, so after pressing my leader key, you can see I get this sort of nice tabular view of all the possible mappings that I've got. So you can look at that and go, well, yeah, that's fine, but what's the big deal? Well, the key thing with that I found with which key is it forces you to explain yourself. So the way that you set the mappings up, um, or rather, when you write your mappings, I, I, before which key. I've never really seen much value in the description um, key. But that ends up being the thing that which key exposes as the description of your shortcut. And by think, having to think about that um, and write your description in for each of your mappings, I actually found it removed loads of comments from my mappings file because it, it almost becomes self-documenting then. And by doing this process, writing a description for each of your mappings, it, it ultimately forced me to discover some patterns. So to give you an example, before I'd gone through this process, I had things like um, leader LT for toggling git line blame, and then I also had leader I for browsing file commits. Now, on the surface of it, that's fine. There's some sort of mnemonics there, but they're two pieces of seldom used functionality for me but there's no common, common mapping pattern. So they're both sort of around Git, but they're not something I'm doing all the time. And so often when I came to use them, I couldn't remember which exact incantation I'd set them up as. Whereas now I prefix all the Git related stuff with leader G. So I can just quickly show you what that looks like. So if I do um, leader G, you can see now I get that little thing just down the the bottom left, which hopefully you can see there, I've got git toggle line blame, browse file commits, and git status. So the reason I think this is a, a really good thing is because when you can group stuff together, you've got far less cognitive load. You don't need to remember the exact mapping that you have. You're just remembering the patterns. And the same sort of thing goes for LSP code-related things. For me, I've got them all set behind leader C. So code actions, rename, you know, things of that nature. And before I'd got down to um, sorting it all out with WitchKey, those sort of mappings were all over the place. So I like to think of WitchKey as Marie Kondo for, for, for mapping files. Hope that reference isn't lost on everybody.
And the other important thing um, was that going through this process also exposed a big shortcoming in my previous mappings. So a while ago when I first got my um, one of my first configs up and running, I had select all inside of buffer set up for leader SA, which on the surface makes a lot of sense. Leader, S for select, A for all. Um, and alongside this, I can remember being really frustrated at the speed of spelling suggestions in, in NeoVim. Um, I would press leader S as my thing to pop up my spelling suggestions. And I, there was just this always this nagging delay. It was like I was using VS Code or something. It was just this imperceptible sort of 500 milliseconds that just used to frustrate the hell out of me. But I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I just assumed that must just be the way that Vim is. It must just have a, a slow way of building up the, the spelling suggestions. But then skip forward to when I'm configuring which key. And I couldn't understand why the mapping that I'd got for select all wasn't showing in the list of stuff in which key, which is when I realized what I'd done. The spelling suggestions weren't showing correctly because the select all mapping that I had started leader S. So in the case of me waiting for spelling suggestions, I'm pressing leader S, but near them's waiting to see if I'm going to press leader S A. And so it's only when that times out that it's able to ascertain that, oh, he just wanted the spelling corrections. And that was the same reason why which key couldn't display the mapping for me because it was kind of representing two things. So the good news is, having gone through this process, I've actually ended up with a better mapping now for select all anyway, because I could just go leader A um, and spelling suggestions. I'm pleased to report our instant. So uh, let's just go to a spelling suggestion. Now, that was like horrible frustrating delay before, which is thankfully gone. And then the final part, once you've sort of sort, sorted out your um, your mnemonics and your, your grouping of alike uh, mappings, um, you come on to the sort of the more fun part, which is expressing any additional needs that you need um, with Lua. So I'm by no means a whiz with Lua, but thankfully... I find it relatively similar to JavaScript. And so for, with a little bit of work, I've found that I'm able to make myself some genuinely useful things for myself. And if I can do it, there's every chance that you can too. So I just, in this last part, want to show you some examples of the things that I've done with Lua. So when I'm working, I tend to have one display and a bunch of windows open with three or four files, um, three or four files open at once. And before I'd done anything with these mappings, I was using just the leader and the arrow key to jump around the windows. So uh, let's go across this one here. So here's a bunch of files from my config. Um, what I was doing was if I was over in this far right-hand side um, buffer and I wanted to get across, uh, which way, wait, that way, right across to that end, I was kind of having to do a giddy up horsey to go across which you know, I mean, it's not terrible, but we can definitely do better. Um, yeah, and it was the same with quadrants. If I'd got my windows um, split into quarters, then that was a pain because I'd have to go up one and across one, or vice versa. So it turns out, like all things with Vim, NeoVim, that there is a way of sort, sorting this out. So the NeoVim API can give you the number of each window. And so if we can see where we want to go, we can go straight there. And what I've done is I've set my inactive status bar to show the number of the window. So admittedly, this is probably going to be teeny weeny for you there. But if you look down to the bottom there, let me see if I can actually. So here we go. There's a little four there in blue. No, oh, I'm off the screen. But if you look across the different buffers, excuse me, um, at each corner, you can see the, the window number in blue. So that's the first part of the puzzle. And I'm using Lua line, and the Lua line documentation even gives you this little um, snippet which you can use to stick that number in your status line. So now I've got it there, I just need to figure out how to jump to it. So the, the mapping, the, the default mapping for getting around by window number in, uh, in Vim is to do the number that you want to go to 
then Control W, and then W, which is fine, but that's a bit of a dance for something that you're doing all the time. So I decided what I wanted to do is have my leader key and then just the number of the window. So if I want to go to window two, it's leader two. Um, window three, leader three, you get the idea. So again, this is sort of re-emphasizing this stuff that I said back at the beginning where, where possible, you want to get these critical things that you do all the time to be um, as instant as possible. So you could write individual mappings uh, one by one, but obviously lose the scripting language, you can do a loop. And so what I've done is, is make a little um, loop which creates a set function for me. So you can see here, simple um, loop in Lua. I've just done one to six because the reality is I've never used more than four windows. Um, but obviously you can have that making as many as you need. So the key map set takes two strings, one for the left-hand side, one for the right-hand side, and then the description. And so I'm just using the, um, the iteration count to build up leader and a number. The right-hand side is then the number, control WW, and then the actual command is being written out with the description being incrementally built for each one as well. So yeah, just to sort of show you that. So I'm over on window one there and I want to get to four. It's just leader four and I'm straight over in that window. So a couple more simple ones. Uh, day to day, I write a simple work diary, just plain text in Markdown. And every day I just need to add the header as a date, which not the biggest thing in the world, but you know, I'm getting on a bit. I can't always remember what date it is. And so what I do now is I've just got a little function. Let's suppose, let's go down to the bottom of the file here. And let's suppose I wanted to add the date here. I can just do leader D, stick in today's date, and also put me insert mode at the bottom there. So this is the, the function that I've got to do this. There's probably a better way, but this is absolutely fine. But I'm basically just assembling the bits and pieces that I need, getting the operating system date. And then I'm using a couple of the NeoVim APIs, one to set the current line, and then feed keys lets me programmatically um, go from normal mode and press O to slip me into insert mode and put me a line below. Again, very simple stuff, but if it's stuff that you do all the time, taking the time to figure these things out can be very impactful. Another little example, um, I write blog posts in Markdown, but I need to get them into my CMS as HTML. And to do that, I use Pandoc, but I can never remember, I always had to look up the particular incantation of Pandoc and the arguments that I like to get it into the format that I liked. Um, so then what I've done is I've, I've got a map in there, which basically it's a visual mode mapping so that you know, I can show you this working. So um, I've got a markdown file here. I can do control A to select everything. And then I've got this behind uh, leader X for, um, sorry. So selected it all, leader X. Option there is Pandoc export. So I press P and that pipes it into, I'll just see if you can see this here. Um, so this is my clipboard now with that converted to HTML. So yeah, all, all that's doing is running it through Pandoc, taking the result of that, shoving it into my system clipboard via PB copy. Another little one. I'm often, you know, I'm on Teams or whatever, and somebody's asking me, oh, what file are you working on? Map in there just gets me the current buffer and file name and puts that into my, my system clipboard. Final one. I'd like to think I was better than this, but the reality is when I'm working in JavaScript or TypeScript, I tend to write a few console logs, and that's pretty annoying if I accidentally commit that code with a load of console logs in. So I've got another little uh, mapping. <clears throat> which is just leader XC, and that basically uses uh, the G command 
to search for any console logs on any line and delete those lines out of the file. Again, single key press and I've, I've tidied up that whole file. So just to summarize, I feel like simple mappings can be the most satisfying and useful because they're the things that you use most often and you can bring them really close to hand. The truth of the matter is I wish I knew offhand a lot of these more esoteric commands, but I can't remember them. I'm just not that good. So I cheat and, and I'm fine with that. That's all. Thank you for your time.